Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Some Low Grade Gamers podcast. Today is a very special day. It is our 10th anniversary. We are all back in middle school again and we are celebrating our 10 week anniversary with our girlfriends or in this case with Dan the low grade gamer. <laughs> As usual, some low grade gamers consists of me and the other half of some kind of gaming, the lovely Laura. Laura, how are you this week? I'm good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Thank you for asking. Good. And the low grade gamer himself, Mr. Dan. Dan, how are you doing? Good, good. Thank you. How are you doing, Tom? I'd I... like to specifically know about you first. Oh, and then must. I will move to Laura much you know what i think we should specifically know about these two beautiful guests we've got here with us today yeah dan so we are lucky enough to be joined by two beautiful people who are also part of this lovely industry we call video games first up we have a returning guest the lovely insanity secure insanity how are you i'm pretty good how about you guys we are fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us once again. It is an absolute pleasure to have you back here. Yes, see me here. And we have a brand new guest on the show today. Super excited to announce that the lovely Lemon Cult Games, aka Jen, is joining us. Yes. Jen, how are you? Would you prefer me refer to you as Jen or Lemon or Lems or Lems. whatever you want? Whatever tickles your fancy, honestly. <laughs> Laura's uh, pet name for Jen is Lems. So uh, let's go with Lems. It sounds fun, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> so, it's just classic Australian. Just have to abbreviate everything. Aren't you a so, Kiwi? Yeah. So you're... I was referring to you. Oh, you're impostering the Australian now, are you? Yeah. Classic Kiwis wishing they were Australian. Just on that, right, just on that, I'm on my rant already. Did you see the uh, one of the latest additions to Call of Duty, uh, which was meant to be an Australian uh, edition, is actually New Zealand? That oh. they're calling it Australian? Please inform us. It's really upsetting. Oh, no. So I, I, I only saw the details briefly, but... Basically, they introduced a brand new character who is Australian. Yeah. Turns out he is not based on an Australian at all. He is actually based on a New Zealander. And people are pissed. Uh, Can you blame yeah. them? Enough. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm pissed. I mean. Why does this always happen? Yeah. How hard is it? Australia, New Zealand. Doesn't New Zealand have two islands? One of them is Australia, one of them is New Zealand? No. Oh. That's what a 12-year-old on Call of Duty told me one time. To be, to be fair, New Zealand technically, as part of the Australian um, constitution, is actually allowed to join us at any time they wish. Allowed, if they wish, which we don't. No. No, and you didn't at the time when we made it either because nobody decided to invite the people from New Zealand over. They just decided to do it and then say, oh, by the way, guys, if you want to get in on this, you're, am I going again? Let's and just, New uh, Zealand was like, get wrecked. Yeah, yeah. basically that's what happened. Don't work her up. Get wrecked. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's touched a, touched a someone... point there. Someone on stream the other day asked if New Zealand was a real country or if it was a country, I mean, sorry, a city in Australia. Oh, no. Uh, oh. It was quite sad. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> now that we've had the uh, Australia-New Zealand conversation, it's actually fitting that Dan brought up Call of Duty because the first point of discussion on today, the 10th anniversary of our podcast, is the classic, the elephant in the room. Microsoft has purchased Activision $70 billion. Billion. Does, mm. does that money even exist in the world? What do we, Lemon, please tell us your thoughts. What do, what do you think of this? 
Uh, I actually think it's really interesting. Uh, waking up to that news was quite something. I was like, I read it and I like went up to my husband. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Did you know that they just like, like purchased it? And he was like, they did what now? And I was like, $70 billion. And I was losing my mind. And I was just like, I think it's really interesting that they did that. And I didn't see it coming like at all. I would not have guessed. So I think it's really interesting, especially the timing. It needed something like that to happen, didn't it? Like yeah. after all of the dramas and things, like obviously it was kind of like rotten from the core. It's like, what do you do other than just like have a complete overhaul? Yeah. But is it worth $70 billion if Activision has, is as you say, rotten to the core? I wouldn't pay $70 billion dollars for rotten an apple. So they've probably bought it and then replaced all the staff with their own. Oh, well, that is a point that we will get to a little bit later after Insanity tells us her thoughts on the subject. Well, I was um, kind of similar to uh, Lemon here where I saw the news and I'm like freaking out. I'm sending it to everyone I know. I'm like, can you believe that this is happening? Cause, right? Um, right. Send it cause, to me. Yes, because <laughs> it, it just came out of the blue. I was not expecting it. Uh, No one had leaked anything. So it was really, you know, just surprise. Here we are. Um, I'm actually cautiously optimistic about what will happen, at least in regards to, you know, working conditions, payments, so on, as well as not just that, but also the possibility of, fixing so many known issues with things like Call of Duty and that whole um, enterprise uh, where we know that cheating is rampant and it still has not been really corrected, even with their anti-cheats and everything else. Um, So I'm excited, uh, cautiously optimistic, but excited to see what's to come with that. See where it goes from here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. it might. I might download it again if if I see good progress. Well, the arguably the best part about this acquisition is that word on the street is that the CEO of Activision is going to step down. That's already been uh, confirmed by Phil Spencer. He's kicked in and said that he will now be the CEO. It'll, Activision Blizzard will fall under his. Um, umbrella, I guess you could say. And just, just another quick note: it's sixty-eight point seven billion, not seventy. Let's let's not round nah, up, guys. Nah, that's nah. Nah. <laughs> Sixty-nine's a nicer number than seventy, though. Let's True. be honest. Yeah. True. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Phil Spencer is the uh, CEO of Microsoft Xbox. So yeah, it is. Definitely a good thing, finally, that the CEOs of Activision are stepping down. I am personally a little bit worried because Microsoft has an interesting history with the purchasing of studios. Does anybody remember a little studio called Rare? They uh, created such games as Conquer Donkey Kong Country. You know, like the basically anything on Nintendo 64, Golden Eye, anyone? 007? Banjo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. All like literally the Nintendo 64 wrote on the back of Rare Entertainment. And Microsoft purchased them. If you go onto Rare's Wikipedia article and search up what games Rare has developed and produced, there is like literally 10 every year until Microsoft acquires them. And then there's like 10 in the last two decades. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. They've they had just bought them and then did nothing. Sweet. Nothing. Mm-hmm. They released Rare Replay, which has all the classics. They did their Viva Pinata series on Xbox. Lemon, I know you're a big Xbox fan, so I'm, I'm sure you've heard of Viva Pinata. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, I personally haven't played it, so I, I can't comment on it at He's all. He's that little wee donkey guy, right? Mm-hmm. It's actually it's, really it's fun. fun. Yeah, it's yeah. a fun little game. Yeah. Is it like a platformer or something? I think it's, so. 
I I like, want to compare it to something like Fallout. Oh, okay. So um, you're going through obstacles and you have to reach certain points, so on and so forth. So it's pretty fun. It's it's a fun game to play like with your siblings or your little kids, nieces, nephews, and even just the family. We had we used to have fun with it. Okay, fair enough. So I mean, look, that's a that's a plus on Rare's side, but yeah, you look you look at what they used to release, and it's it's arguably and it was, I, I have to reiterate, it was Fall Guys, not Fallout. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. I was gonna say Fallout. I was like, whoa. I was a little confused, <laughs> but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna let her ride with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, thank you. You compare it to whatever you would like to. No. Compare. <laughs> yeah, so so that's my only worry is the fact that Microsoft has this history, if you will, of taking amazing studios and doing not a lot with them. Uh, we all know about their recent acquisitions with Bethesda and stuff like that. Uh, we're all waiting for Starfield to come out. I believe that's later this year. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone? I think so. Yeah. yeah. And my next question is, is that going to be Xbox slash Microsoft exclusive? I doubt it. Well, like, arguably the best thing about this acquisition is that maybe the Xbox is going to have some more exclusives now. Did you just so, offend the whole genre of gamers, Laura? I think I might have. Mm. But can they really argue with me? We've had, like, one have we not? Yeah, PS, like PlayStation yeah. has had a lot, but Xbox not a whole lot, so. One! Yeah. yeah. Two. Yeah. Forza. Okay, Forza, yeah. Halo. Forza and Halo. Okay, two. Yeah. Yeah. There's still not that many. Hopefully they're going to have some more now. Sue me! <laughs> we were all thinking it. No, no, I, I'm, all for, I'm all for it. But that that is the next question. Is things like Call of Duty going to become Microsoft exclusive? What What do we no. think is going to it. happen? No. Mm. Yeah, it's too big so of a franchise right now to be, like, locked off like that. Yeah. There'd be too much outrage. Yeah. Damn. you got, you got to remember, Xbox is banking on Game Pass. They're not – that's that's what they're focused on. So yeah. for them, exclusivity I don't think is the key here. I think the key at the moment is expanding Game Pass further and adding these titles to that. I don't think they've got any intention of making a significant amount of their IP uh, exclusive because we, we all know they don't make money from the actual console itself. They make money from everything else going on. So as far as Xbox is concerned or Xbox Game Studios or Microsoft, I think it's a different kettle of fish. And just to go back to the rare argument, I see where you're coming from, but I disagree. Only because, now, listen, I'm very intelligent, so I'll tell you why. <laughs> uh, he likes to think so anyway. It, in the past, Xbox hasn't been under the Microsoft umbrella necessarily. Okay. Mm. In terms of what they've got access to, how they move, all those sorts of things. They were sort of there, but not really there. So mm -hmm. I think what we'll see moving forward is a lot more of this stuff coming to coming to head. And the fact that they're working so well with Nintendo. Mm, I like that a lot. You know, I like that, that's credit to them because they literally could have said, you know what, your Nintendo 64 lineup that you've got, boom, gone, stuff yeah. here. They yep. could have done that with their whole Nintendo lineup, basically. Because as you just said, on Nintendo 64, the only good, not only good, but one of the main studios was Rare. So they literally could have obliterated Nintendo's foray into, into that new world. So I, I I don't see any exclusives. Not not big, not not a lot. They will make certain ones exclusive. I almost guarantee that. Uh, you, they'd be stupid not to. Of course. Uh, but I, I think a lot of this has to do with Game Pass. And realistically, those that 
play Call of Duty and all that sort of stuff. For them, I don't really know if PlayStation versus Xbox is a thing. Now, that's just going on my friendship group. Uh, I think I mentioned last time there was about 15 of us that used to play Call of Duty. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's just disintegrated. So once that comes back into the fray, uh, and, and Microsoft does take that lead because, you know, as they've already said, CEO is gone and other bits and pieces, they're going to completely change those areas. And, and you can bet your bottom dollar that Microsoft are going to tackle that aggressively. So speaking of Game Pass, I think my little hunch is that Microsoft is going to make all of these games Game Pass exclusive. Yeah. And then try to sell Game Pass on Sony consoles. Moment of silence. I doubt it. No, no I, I, doubt I don't it. think Sony would let that happen. Yeah. They ha- if, if Call of Duty is on Game Pass only, they kind of have to. How many people only play, how many gamers just play Call of Duty? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's a lot, but I also don't. I, I think Microsoft will still sell it as a standalone because mm-hmm. they do still make a significant amount of money doing that, and the battle passes that subsequently come along with it. Yes. So I don't see, I, I don't see it going that way, and I don't see Sony allowing Game Pass on their platform. I mean, look, there's been rumours for ages that it's coming to Nintendo and it's doing this. None of that's going to happen. Because no, Xbox are going to want people in their ecosystem no, to be able to target. Well, Nintendo and Xbox have a great relationship. As Dan just mentioned, Banjo-Kazooie has just come to the Nintendo 64 online service on the Switch, mm-hmm. which is, like, that's a Microsoft-owned IP. It's amazing. There's rumors of 007 GoldenEye coming to that as well, which would be fantastic. So uh, or the Ori games, has anyone else played Ori? The yeah. Ori that's so good. Like, Ori and the Will of the Wisps is one of my favorite games of all time. That, that thing is a masterpiece. And that's an Xbox Studios, although Moonlight Studios have now split from Xbox, just a little piece of, piece of news for everyone. But, um, yeah, so they were, they were Xbox exclusives come over to Nintendo. So they seem to have a good, good relationship. Microsoft tried to purchase Nintendo back in the day. Imagine. Microsoft is in the business of purchasing aren't they i think are they just trying to like acquire everything in the market so yeah i think they're just padding padding out their game pass because i think it's cheaper it's obviously cheaper to purchase it long term and hold the ip yourself and then sell that ip you know the the products of that ip you know Intellectual property is huge. When yeah. Google bought Motorola, as an example, Google bought Motorola y- years ago. Oh, and I'm going on a tangent, but they bought that, like Google bought them years ago, stripped all of the intellectual property from Motorola, and then sold the company for peanuts to Lenovo. There you so go. Lenovo are now running Motorola, but they don't have any of the ip and this was some seriously big ip stuff stuff that every single manufacturer needed so so you're telling me activision's ip is worth 70 billion dollars 68.7 yes yeah, um actually <laughs> that's a lot of billions uh, i can't that's, even imagine it that's a lot of money man that would set you like for your entire life Surely yeah. that's more than the GDP of some small countries. Oh, oh I can almost get that. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably bigger than New Zealand. But let's be honest. Ooh. Let's be honest. Far more. Pew pew. Shot fired. I'm. I can admit that. <laughs> you got a big tourism industry. It's fun. <laughs> it's beautiful. That's what it's got going for it. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just such an interesting moment in gaming. I think Lemon, you mentioned earlier, not during the podcast, but in our pre-podcast chats, that Microsoft is becoming the new Disney, the Disney right. of games. Right. Would you yeah. care to uh, expand upon that thought? 
Well, I just think it's interesting because, I mean, we've seen Disney over the years acquire so many things and then make them their own, right? Like Marvel, for example, was one of the major examples we can think of. And it's just, you know, seeing this massive buyout, I'm just curious to see how much more they're going to do if they are going to do anymore, which I, I'm sure they probably will. I just don't know what's next on the chopping block, if that makes sense. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I really hope that if this metaphor makes sense, they do something like the Mandalorian or the, the Disney Plus series. Right. They take advantage of what they have available. You know, they don't just let it sit there. Like you were mentioning earlier, they just kind of let it sit. Right. But like this time, if they don't let it sit, then they can also make a whole lot of money out of it. So, I mean, mm-hmm. if they're smart about it. They'll make a lot of money and make a lot of people very happy. So, yes, exactly. I think the weirdest thing about this whole acquisition is that now Microsoft owns Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Did your 10-year-old self ever think that would happen? What a time to be yeah. alive. I know, right? Yeah. My 10-year-old self is 10? waiting for it to come out. The Xbox wasn't out when I was 10. Oh, look, look, Dan. Look, Neither. We, we know all the old Dan. We're discussing that on our Maybe Twitch. you're the only young one maybe, here. Maybe I am. <laughs> Sorry? Should I Baby Tom? No, no. I played the PS1, okay? Crash Bandicoot and Spyro was on that. It was a good time. And now it's on Xbox, and yeah. I'm a bit confused. With Hopefully games like that still will be coming to Nintendo. Well, I I just hope that they revive some franchises. So we all know that Spyro turned into like the Skylanders series, Mm -hmm. which was like a game, uh, Mm -hmm. sorry, a toy based game. Mm -hmm. So you had to buy all these like toys and accessories. Arguably worse. Arguably worse, but also a very cool concept. Like I enjoyed the concept. You can uh, find all the toys in the uh, discount bins of many game stores around these days. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they're not 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 the greatest idea for like a long term. The discount bin is never a good place mm-hmm. to be. Yeah, not the greatest thing for long term playability, but they were fun games. But they, excuse me, Skylanders hasn't released anything in a long time. So I'm hoping for. Uh, we just had a brand new Crash Bandicoot game. Like surely. Activision, now Microsoft, is going to restore some of these old franchises. You know what I want to see revived? Go on. Guitar Hero. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. yes. Oh my god. Revive yes. so bad. I played it at the arcade like a couple weeks ago and I was like it was like 99% I was like I've still got it. <laughs> he beat me. I'm I'm a better IRL guitarist, but uh, yeah, Laura. When it comes to guitar hero, Laura's got me mate. beat hands down. <laughs> I would hate to know how many hours I've sunk into that game. The man, like playing playing music is never a waste of time, and we all Even love when video it's guitar games. Even hero music. Well, we all love video games, and so don't worry about it. That's why it's like the greatest mashup ever. I agree. I so agree. It's it helped me discover Dragon Force through the Fire and Flames. Mm-hmm. Beautiful song. There's many other better songs, arguably, but yeah, no, fantastic. But that was like the one that you think of because it was like the one on Expert that was the hardest to get. So yeah. we're, talk- yeah. we're talking about the uh, revival of Activision IPs. Do we think that Sony or maybe Nintendo is going to revive any other old IPs to combat this acquisition? So if Sony is scared that COD may sometime in the future become Microsoft exclusive. Are they going to revive an old first person shooter franchise or start a new one? Anyone? Sony haven't got anything left. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? I can't see Nintendo making one. Oh, they're all yeah. bought. Me- Me- Metroid Prime is kind of their go to. That's the closest it would yes. get, I reckon. Yeah. I agree. Which, is, yeah. which is a fantastic game. But I would. There's lots of people that are waiting for that. Yes, that, yep. that is a whole new kettle of fish. Yeah, I agree, I agree with you, Lemon. Nintendo is, is almost a little bit removed from this whole situation. Uh, Nintendo is not really a direct competitor, if you will. 
Well, first party shooters like aren't necessarily Nintendo's thing unless we're talking Metroid Prime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, they're definitely not their go-to franchise. But what what is what has Sony got left? Like, are they going to create a new IP or go back to some old ones? Dan, you have something to say? I can see it in your eyes. Yeah, all they got left is Spider Man. That's better. Yep, that's true. Spider-Man Everything else has been released. Mm. So they have they have two things. So potentially <laughs> mash up. Ooh, a, what a Spider Man shooter. Spider-Man and God of War. Just mash them. Well, Just mash them. if we're talking about Sony IPs, you've got The Last of Us, Uncharted, Spider-Man, the Wolverine is coming, Insomniac has released that. <gasps> you know, sorry, this might be slightly off topic, but I just got really excited remembering what's coming out this year on the PlayStation. That freaking Harry Potter game. Yeah. That oh, one, yeah. That's not an exclusive, though, is it? <laughs> I don't know. I just got excited about it and distracted. I did a disclaimer at the start. I gasped and I said it was off topic, but yep, Harry that, Potter. Yep, because that's, I'm pretty sure that's coming to uh, Microsoft as well. Damn. Anyways, Horizon, Lemon Lemon Cult Games on Twitch has uh, played through Horizon. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what did you think, Lemon? I know you played it on a Microsoft PC, but... Yes. Uh, good game, actually. I really liked it. Uh, I have a slightly unpopular opinion that I don't think the story is as good as everyone chalks it up to be. I think it is a good game. I think it's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. The gameplay is amazing. There's good challenges. It's a wonderful RPG. I just don't think it's as good of a story as everybody hypes it up to be. It's not like The Witcher 3 or Red Dead Redemption 2. I, like, I don't think it's on the same level, but it is a wonderful game. So I enjoyed every minute of playing that game. No, it was. I enjoyed every minute of watching you play that game. It was a really good time. If you like uh, single player RPGs, Lemon Cold Game plays a lot of those over on Twitch. Please, uh, please go check her out. There's a shameless plug for you, Lemon. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> no worries, anytime. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. I am extremely excited for Forbidden West to come out. Uh, I know, Lemon, you don't have a PlayStation. So, unfortunately, you cannot play that until it releases on PC, fingers crossed, hopefully sometime in the future. But I am, yeah, I'm personally excited for that. That comes out in, uh, yeah, just under 20 days or something like that. So, yeah, ex- extremely really excited. Good. So I think Sony Dan- are getting better with that, though. Basically is what I'm trying to say. They have a lot more than Spider-Man. Ratchet and Clank, like, dude, Ratchet and Clank, man. And love that. Love those guys. They're the best. Look. If somebody revives Jack and Daxter, I'm in. <laughs> as long as it's not the PS4 version of those games because they are kind of sucked. Frame I just, rate. I just want to get back into Jack and Daxter. I don't care about anything else. I want Microsoft <laughs> to buy Jack and Daxter. you got to get into the new Naughty Dog IPs, I'm telling you. Uncharted, The Last of Us, they're great. They're great. Dan, stop shaking your head at me. The nostalgia is not there. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Nostalgia, nostalgia is a huge part of video games, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. If right. it wasn't, they wouldn't remake things or bring them back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, precisely. <sighs> Even my mum remembers medieval. That's right, she does too. Does anybody else remember medieval? Oh, yes, I do actually. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was like, while. surely one person. Yeah. That took yeah. me a minute. Yeah, I bought Laura Medieval for the remake on PS4. For I Christmas. told my mum on Skype over at Christmas, and she's like, oh, "That game had a really good soundtrack." Right. It's funny how parents remember their kids' games. Speaking of Jack and Daxter, the only game that my seventy-year-old father has ever played in his entire life is Jack and Daxter. He loved it. Love it. Mum played Peggle. Did anyone else play Peggle? Peggle? Yes, yeah. I played the shit out of Peggle. <laughs> How good is Peggle? What, what is Peggle? So good, dude. It's like kind of like ping pong, but different. A ping much pong. better version of ping pong. Yeah. So yeah. pong? No, not. It's not pong. pong. Oh, no. it's like so. Pong was first. Yeah. Yes. Ping well, pong. Sorry. First. First. But Pong's kind of like doop, doop. but yes. Ping Pong's yes. got all the other bits and 
bobs. Yeah, it's got a net and stuff. Yeah. Piggle is like that, but better. I love yes. the difference between how you say Piggle versus how <laughs> Lemon says Piggle. <laughs> That's why I was really hoping somebody would say yes, not only for the fact that they played the game, but that they understood what I was trying to say. Both of you doing, Dan? Dan, have you got Piggle on oh, your Oh, he's your playing what? Pong. He's got Pong, Pong on his Pong. Pong. <laughs> Remember Play. when it was Pong like watch. state-of-the-art games and everyone was like, mm. oh, my God. I don't because I'm way too young for that. Those watches are high tech. This lady was trying to, like, pay with one yesterday, but, like, she didn't quite know how to do it. And she was like, I just need to show my husband that I know how to do it. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm struggling, but he needs to know. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm a strong, independent lady. I did end up helping her, though. That's all right. That's we fine. Found, we figured it out together. <laughs> so let's go back to the whole Activision acquisition here. We did mention that the CEO is going to step down which is, as I think we already mentioned, arguably the best thing about this whole acquisition because Activision has a terrible history in the last year or so. A lot of interesting information, to put it lightly, has come out about Activision and their workplace and assaults and bullying and just basically like Anything bad you can think of to happen in a workplace seems to have happened at Activision Blizzard. Uh, they've had to change names of whole characters in video games because they were named after abusers. Uh, Lemon, the I think characters they had to change in World of Warcraft is insane. I'm a really? big WoW player, and it's like they had to change so much. And then after all this nonsense, like not nonsense, well, it's nonsense. It's, it's absolutely terribly like terrible what happened. Um, but after all this, like you know, terrible stuff came out. They also started going on a spree of like censoring a lot of stuff in World of Warcraft, like changing paintings that were like slightly sexual to like pictures of fruit. Like it's like a really big <laughs> meme <laughs> right now. Okay. But like they started doing like a bunch of stuff instead of actually dealing with the core problem. And it was like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> the issue isn't a painting in World of Warcraft. Yes, exactly. You change a painting or fruit. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, Man, oh, they really had their priorities all skew if mm. didn't they? The priorities were a little whack. They could have easily just said, I stand with the victims, and then fired a bunch of people or a bunch of people stepped down, and that, like, we would have all been happy. But, but they've put their time into changing every painting in World of Warcraft into oh, yeah. a what? Oh my! Oh, honest, I I just I just don't understand. I just honestly do not understand. See, it needed a, a whole overhaul. It mm -hmm. just needed like everything needed to be refreshed. Mm -hmm. For real, they so changed all the voice lines and jokes. Like there, a lot of their jokes that like your characters could make when you did like slash joke. A lot of them were like sexual innuendos, and they were pretty clever and they were fun. But they were like, oh no no, we can't have this either. So we totally need to change this up. So they like they've just. Not focusing on the right things, man. <laughs> no. Definitely not. Like so, nobody was complaining about that. Nobody. They just wanted the real life people like getting like the justice they deserved, right? Right. Is is yeah. not the jokes in World of Warcraft. Oh my exactly. Right. Yeah, it's it is quite ridiculous, isn't it? So half the reason we decided that we would have insanity and lemon on the show today was it was actually before Microsoft purchased Activision, and we thought it would be a great idea to discuss the female presence in gaming and in the industry. Uh, none of us are developers by any means, so we're a little bit removed from that whole world. But we are all Twitchers, uh, apart from the low-grade gamer Dan. He runs a gaming website, idigitalgames.com. Go check that out for any digital game codes. I got you, Dan. I got you back. Thank you. <laughs> But, yeah, so w women in gaming, and it just seemed like, you know, with the whole a uh, Activision acquisition, it seemed like the perfect time to be able to talk about it. So Dan and I are going to take a little bit of a back seat 
in this next segment, if you will. Uh, I'm going to chuck it on to Laura, who is probably going to be your host in some way over the, the next couple minutes. Laura, please shoot. Well, it sort of seemed to feed into a wider issue that, like, how women are viewed in the world of gaming as a whole. Um, and I was wondering if you guys had had any weird experiences being women in the world of gaming. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Plenty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually oh, yeah. really lucky and I haven't had a whole lot. I've had like yeah. a few things, but not anything too major, I'll be honest. Um, I haven't had to deal with much of it, so I've been really lucky. But I've heard a lot about it and I've you know heard lots of story and talked to people who have had it happen to them, so... It's pretty rampant. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Sanity, what is your craziest story? Uh, craziest story. Let's see. Probably getting asked for pictures mm. of body parts. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, Gross. Yeah. Good yeah. Good. Um, Dan's favorite one, you know, people just jumping in chat and saying, hey, baby girl, when never played with them, like, once. What she means by chat, sorry, was (laughs) literally in our ears. Yeah. Jumped into the game we were playing and then proceeded to say, hey, baby girl. They hear a voice and they're like, ooh. No, they just kept on talking. Oh, you kept on. Yeah. I was confused. Um, but no, that wasn't like the worst. That wasn't like one of the worst ones. But like requests for uh, pictures. Um, thankfully, I have not received any pictures. So it's lucky. Um, I've had friends that have received pictures consistently, constantly. It's just abhorrent. Um, I have had like... Um, hey, why don't you show us, you know, on stream, you know, stuff like that. Um, You know, just stupid things that should not be said to anyone, let alone a woman. Um, So like uh, Lemon said, it's they're not the worst that I've heard from other people, but still kind of like, it, it, it takes you back and it's like, am I, am I true? Should I sh- continue doing this? Um, only because there is a part of you that is like, how far can they really go in their insistence and pushiness? Um, you know, just like, you know, concerns about doxing, concerns about, you know, phone numbers, real names, addresses, you know, I've changed everything that I have to make sure my real name is never out there because I don't have a, you know, a typical name like, you know, Sam, Samantha, you know, none of that. So it's very particular. So I'm like, no, I just need to make sure like everything on my stream has nothing associated to it. I even thought about like getting my little Instagram decal for my car. And my daughter was the one that was like, you shouldn't. And I'm like, why? It's just my Instagram and whatever. And she's like, you have, you have no clue the amount of stories that I've heard of creeps, just following people, then, you know, harassing them on Instagram, doxing them online because they know where you live i'm like yep okay thanks duly noted Mm. it's almost like a guy sees you playing a game or something online and they automatically think that you aren't playing video games because you like to play video games that you're playing video games because you want to meet guys or you want to associate with guys and they're like oh (laughs) <laughs> they're playing games because they want to be near dudes and it's not that you're playing games because you like playing games yeah it's like they think that that is their area of expertise and girls have no place there and if they are there they're doing it for a particular reason because they want to be in the male gaze or they 
like something yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm very careful with what I wear on stream as well mm -hmm. yeah. because of the same reason. No, absolutely. I mean, yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, like, I don't, <laughs> for lack of a better way to say it appropriately, I don't have many assets. I don't, right? Like, and part of that, I think, is actually kind of a blessing. I don't get as much attention, like sexual attention, as I think I would if I did, um, which maybe that's not exactly accurate, but I was talking about it with my husband. We were just like, maybe it's like a blessing in disguise, you know, because uh, a lot of women get harassed just because they look really nice. Just because they look nice doesn't mean you should harass them, but it happens exactly. all the time. Lemon yeah, you know. does lovely, but I just have to interject and <laughs> She's wearing a beautiful sweater right now that I'm a massive fan of. Thank you. <laughs> From the 80s. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. It's the really cool. era. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, it's like guys can find any reason to be sexist towards you in, in the world of gaming. I'm pretty lucky because I um, conduct my business with Tom here. Mm-hmm. But when I first started streaming, I streamed by myself uh, for a couple of months. And then, and I noticed a, yeah, a, a different reception once Tom was around. That one that I appreciated more. Yeah. But yeah, it was hard not to notice it. And that any, any particular stupid reason that anybody can find to put you down, they will. For example, I think my most ridiculous comment on Instagram, because that's where I experience most of it, because Twitch and YouTube I do with Tom, but Instagram, like, I've had that for years, so that was just, like, my Instagram was my own thing. And probably the stupidest comment that I had, like, I posted a picture with a – a controller a particular type of controller and somebody writes a comment they're like oh, she doesn't have the sn30 pro 2 zero out of 10 <laughs> zero I'm so confused why i know like i read it i just had to laugh because i was like really <laughs> like that is what you've got oh this my god to the table and he's seen 30 pro 2 i secret to get it because <laughs> i just thought this one was cooler it's so dumb man it's it so is. asinine reason any possible reason that they have in the wise words of jim morrison people are strange mm -hmm. <laughs> that's for fucking sure that's that's an understatement yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is an understatement. But I, like, I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm glad that you guys are able to laugh about this, though. It's What else do you do? Well, yeah, exactly. exactly. We have no other choice. Yeah. yeah. No. I, I think, I think the only thing that we can do as female gamers and streamers is just try to educate other females out there. Um because I think this is a, a, a much deeper issue that comes from the home and we can't control that. So at least educating other females out there um, is the best way that we can reach out, um, you know, let, making sure that we give ourselves the spot that we deserve and respect ourselves, you know, above anything else. Um you know, and setting boundaries, setting boundaries is like super important. Um, you know, don't come into a female streamer's stream and be like, okay, you're going to play with me right now. Like, no. Or, you know, why are you, you know, why are you streaming this? Or you suck and you shouldn't be playing this because, you know, you're trash. No whatever no one asked you don't like it there's more streamers scroll past yeah like it's, it's it when people get beyond this like veil of just basically just being anonymous right on the internet yeah. they get so much more ballsy like some of these people might not even act that way in real life but they get online and they're like nobody knows who i am i do whatever the hell i want and there's no consequences you know exactly. so that's a lot of what happens 
Yeah. Lack of consequences. Yeah. I so yep. agree. Yep. You say yeah. some of these things in real life and... they w- I bet, like, half of them wouldn't. Like, I'm sure a lot of them would. Yes. But yeah. a lot yes. of them also, like, wouldn't. Like, I doubt that guy would have come up to me in real life and been like, you don't you don't have the SN30 Pro 2. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. Okay. I think they would realize how stupid that sounds. Yeah. At least I hope so. Yeah. yeah. At least. You can only hope, Kane. You can only hope. But how hope. does it change? How does it change? I I don't think it will. Just yeah. like everything else that's afflicting, you know, society across the world. It. it Things don't change because we're not accepting change. We're set in certain ways. And, you know, I think I think this generation currently that's, you know, in their early 20s, late teens are a little bit different, but it's a minority. It's a minority. You know, they have to like scream really loud in order for them to make any type of change and instill that change. Um, But I don't foresee anything changing unless parents start truly teaching their children, hey, you know, it's respect. It's respect. Right. You know, female is just like your mom. You know, you have a mother, you have a sister, you have an aunt, you have all these other female people around you it, it's yeah. it's just it comes from the home yeah definitely i think it comes back to what insanity said earlier about you guys being female streamers and just trying trying to educate people That's, yeah if, if, if you guys can make one person hear that voice then that's fantastic i mean look it's not much but hey if you change one person's opinion yeah. that's that's fantastic yeah, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So even if it's just one voice out there. Yeah. I, I think what sort of disappoints me about this this whole thing is educating people. Like, do you need education on on being a moron? Be a dick. On how right. people with respect. Yeah. Do you yeah. know, like, I, I just, I don't. I don't understand it. I just don't like even like in, insanity's copped it a bit, but even in our interactions, as an example, when I have jumped online to play with her, I've seen it then as well. Now, it probably doesn't happen as much, but what I'm saying by that is. The fact that it still happens, it's not like I jump online every time she's online. Right? Okay. It's not like I'm I'm playing every single time, right? Time differences. But I've seen it multiple times to her, and I just don't get it. It's sort of like, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. I'm so like, you. I don't even know how to articulate this. I just don't get it. Why? Yeah. Why are you more? Yeah. yeah, it's like the consistent the consistent questions of, so how many times are you gonna die on this round? Because that's all you do in this game, and it's like I don't really effing care. Like mm-hmm. I'm having fun. This is this is what I'm doing. I'm sharing it. You want to see someone that is a professional? Go to an esport streamer. Not you here. Start from somewhere. Yes. In the video games to have fun. You don't pop exactly. out of the womb knowing how to play Minecraft. No. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. I mean, that intuitive. No. There's no instructions in that game. Yeah, I've I've had a friend. She's like really really good on uh, COD, and she was in attorney actually streaming her tourney and when they cut you have the open mic in when it ends in that open mic everyone's like screaming and yelling all at the same time it's like hundreds of freaking people it's just ridiculous and 
they started yelling at her, telling her to get in the kitchen and make her, them a sandwich. Stupid. Do you know what's funny but not funny? That exact same thing has happened when I have been, like, prior to the Activision stuff, the scandal, when I was playing COD, that happened multiple times. Like, that's that's not even just one time, because at the end, I don't know, for those that don't know, at the end of a like a multiplayer round, everybody can talk and everybody can hear everything, which is bullshit. And all, all it does, all it does is set people up to attack other people, mm -hmm. which, you know, maybe that talks to Activision's whole culture. But, mm. yeah, True. burn. But, I like it. Yeah, that that exact wording is exactly what I've heard multiple yeah. times when playing COD. No, I've I've heard it multiple times outside yeah. of the video game industry. Oh yeah, it's a common one. Yeah, it's real yeah. common. I am way better at making sandwiches than Laura is. Just <laughs> that like, is absolutely true. She tells me to make her sandwiches. I made some Brussels sprouts the other day, and I didn't cut the butts off, and also. I had the oven on grill instead of bake. I am uh, arguably, well, not even arguably, I'm just better in the kitchen than Laura is. <laughs> it's not about what gender you are, my lord. No, no it's, it's not. not. Safeguarding we've, stuff. Got, we've got strengths, we've got weaknesses, and one of my weaknesses is cooking. So you better not be telling me to go into the kitchen and make you a sandwich because you will regret it. She will make you a shit sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but, so that that's a whole other thing i feel like cod is a big one for it but um males or just people in general gatekeeping games mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. uh, i've had countless comments on my instagram about a game that i post and people just either genuinely don't believe that i've actually played that game they think that i'm lying about it like i've had comments like I bet this is the only screenshot she took of this game before she started playing Animal Crossing again. Mm. Yes, because females are only allowed to play Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley, aren't they? <laughs> what yeah. is that? What the? I have yeah. seen comments on Instagram <laughs> that are like that I just cannot even repeat. No, yes, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Have you guys yeah. had any experiences with the gatekeeping or safeguarding? Not a lot. Yeah. I have. I, okay. I have only because, you know, I mainly play like first person shooters and such. So it's a lot of that male dominated gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, like I even had like a few kids jump on stream and be like, why is a middle aged woman playing a kid's game? Because I was playing Fortnite. And yeah. like my mods were in there and they were like, who the hell developed the damn game? Right. Like, it wasn't a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, just stupidity like that, you know, thinking that, you know, it's either a male game or, you know, it's an age game. Like, you should only play this if you're ABC age. It's just, yeah. people are just dumb. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that insanity because it's, You've got you've got two things going for you there. I see them as assets, both yeah, wise and a strong independent female. But uh, it doesn't even matter if you're not a strong independent female. Like you know, like it doesn't. It just does not matter. Are you having no. fun playing Fortnite? Right, I am, and that's what matters. That <laughs> is seriously what matters. So um, I could only imagine the comments that I would, because I used to play Overwatch. I haven't for a long time since all of this weird stuff has been going on. But maybe, maybe I could jump back into it now that that's all changed, changed hopefully. hands. Um, but I have never played it with voice chat on because I've honestly just like would have been afraid to. Yeah, that when I when I still played COD and played multiplayer. As soon as it loaded, mute the entire game. Don't I don't even deal with it because I, I'm just not in that frame of mind. I'm here. I'm gonna play. Once I'm done playing, I'm out to the next server. No, 
not dealing with it. That's How not disappointing right. is that? That's not that, right. Yeah. It's disappointing. It's disappointing because you expect, you know, it, it's just like you're playing a game that you're supposed to be able to play with randoms yeah. so that you can meet other people. You can meet other players. You can, you know, enjoy the game together. And as soon as they have the opportunity, it's just bashing you. Like, like you said before, Laura, like you came out of the womb learning how or knowing how to play a game. Everyone starts somewhere, but no, it's no, you're dog water, you're trash, you're, you know, stupid, this, that, and the other, which by the way, dog water, does that mean that our dogs are like, their water is dirty? Like, I don't know. I understand it when people use the term dog as an insult because dogs are amazing. They're arguably better than human beings. Everybody. I don't get it either. I think human would be a more more of an insult than yes. dog, to be honest. <laughs> but it's like double standards. Like they can die, fine, nobody says anything, but you die once and yeah. it's just like, why yeah. are you here? I mean, my my gaming, Dan has been there. Absolute, the, all the, like all the comments from specific people, it's all just like, how many times are you going to die this round? Oh my God, my back is killing me because I've had to carry you so many damn times. Oh. You know, stuff like that. I just brush it off and just, you know, tell them to F themselves every once in a while while still laughing. I really don't care. Yeah. But it's like, you know, and I think that's one of the big things that I don't want to make it seem like it's bothering me because it's not. But at the same time, I don't want other females that are watching to think that this is okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like that, you know, where, where does it fall? What line do I tread to say, this is not cool, but not make it seem, Oh my God, you're so sensitive. Cause then it's, that's going to be the issue. You know, yeah. she's a female. Like, so she's sensitive out of you. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. they want yeah. to like hear a girl cry on voice chat because they've been such a dick. Yeah. Is this going to give them some sick sort of satisfaction? I can only imagine. Exactly. But maybe if there's like more like representation of women in gaming, then it will become more um, acceptable in some way. I feel like in like a lot of the Nintendo ads that have been coming out recently, they've got women in them, but these women uh a six symbols like i don't know christina aguilero jessica alba they're always hot chicks not yep. that there's anything wrong with being a hot chick no. but they're always playing a certain type of game like the first game that is always in any of those ads is ring fit yeah it's like why do you have to always make them play that game why can't they be playing like some first person shooter or something. Why are they always playing Animal Crossing or Ring Fit? So it's like they're halfway there. At least I've got women in their ads, but they're always playing a certain type of game. Yeah. I you play know, Ring Fit. I, That's because you're fat. Wait, what? I do kind of. <laughs> Whoa. What? Whoa. <laughs> Shade. Oh my God. No, Dan no. is right. Keeping ring fit. Dan's lost 40 kilos recently. He told me it's, he's doing well with it. It's That's good. amazing. I'm glad. I know. I'm proud That's of great. him. Um, anyways, moving on. <laughs> I would like, I'm, I'm interested in, have, have you guys had an idol when it comes to female representation in games? I, I can personally, uh, I'm not a female, but I really, really love Samus, Samus Aran, the titular character of the metroid series she is so badass it's not even funny she is my main in smash brothers right right zero suit samus she's, oh, she's so fun she has the best attacks that gun oh, she's so good <laughs> it makes like the sense. jump she does so good <laughs> yes. so good so is there anyone that you guys see yourself as or just when you were younger, thought, whoa, you know, here it is. Here is somebody who is like me in a video game. 
you know, like what Black Panther did for the black community in terms of Marvel kind of thing. Do well, you know the what thing I'm about Samus that's like interesting because you think of that question that you just ask and like everybody that you can think of in your mind is like got huge tits or huge hips or like a perfect ass or something. But yeah. Samus is always in a suit. So she doesn't, she's a chick, but she doesn't have that, I don't know, that thing about her you know that like what what this chick has going for her is that she's hot yeah because I think, she the whole um, time. that's cool like i'm not gonna name any names here because there's a there's a couple of things uh being in the industry that i have actually seen and been taken a little bit aback by in terms of female representation so i mean everybody knows tomb raider I was thinking that she was my next example. So has anybody seen Tomb Raider in nothing but a bikini, so Lara Croft, in anything but a bikini? Mm -mm. So why is that the main login page on uh, an X supplier? Oh, that's pathetic. Is that, that, that to me, I was literally sitting there going, Oh, have I gone to the right place? Yeah. Like that was the first thing when I when I first went to go log in, I was like, oh, have I ended up on a weird website? <laughs> like it was so it was just so weird to see that because it's not even like Lara Croft standing there badass, like she's awesome. Series is awesome. Oh yeah, she's badass. Right. I think but, that goes back to the male-dominated industry yes. where yes. they have to sexualize the That's portrayal true. of the female characters. It sells. It's women's reputation, representation exactly. in games and their form of armor in any sort of, like, game. It's like, like Dan said, like a bikini. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the male armor and it's some sort of badass thing. That's why exactly. I like Samus yeah. because Samus isn't in – a bikini the whole time yeah. and it's like it's actually the only example of that that i can think of to mm. be honest well yeah. even in other media like uh black widow's first appearance in iron man 2 like natasha romanov is she's overly sexualized man and yeah. to to marvel's credit in the latest black widow film uh florence Pugh, who plays her sister makes fun of it and she says, oh, you're such a poser and all that. And I love that. Like, give credit where credit to Disney Marvel. They're, they're doing a good job with that stuff. Have but you seen one of the interviews? Just, sorry, just on Scarlett Johansson. On, I know what to say. Yeah, one right. of the interviews. The first thing they said to her was something about, are you wearing underwear on the, with that outfit? Yeah. That's disgusting. Why do yeah. you even ask anybody that? Whose business yeah. is that? Nobody. She, she shot back, though. Yeah. yeah. She, she did. Shot back. Yeah. She's good. Yeah. yeah. I respect Scarlett a lot. She yeah. is. She is. Yeah. She's, she's done. She's fantastic in the Sing movies. So they're very good. She's very good in Sing. My daughter likes it a lot. She's good. <laughs> she's a really good yeah. singer, actually. She's yeah. a really, really good singer. I feel like Black Widow has done what Samus Aran has done for video games in terms of superheroes. And I mean, Wonder the Wonder Woman comics had to introduce Wonder Girl because they needed to find a way to make Wonder Woman accessible for children because mm -hmm. she wasn't, because she was overly sexualized. And mm -hmm didn't want their kids reading Wonder Woman because she's a sex icon. Yeah. That's not right. That's Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, you to think answer your better with the latest Breath of the with Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. If you if you think about Zelda's involvement and the other guardians and the other women do you think they've done better in some ways i mean i think the gerudos they didn't do they you know they sort of overly sexualized i guess one or two of them but right. if, if you think about it zelda's involvement in the latest breath of the wild 
and the fact that she's normally wearing a different outfit to what she has worn in the in the previous games, mm-hmm. I thought was a better representation. Now I think Nintendo has work to do, but I also think Nintendo can get away with a little bit because they do what they want, and if you like it, you like it. If you don't, go away. That's Nintendo's. <laughs> I actually really like the way I, I think you're right. A lot of the Gerudo are like somewhat sexualized and all that. Right. Like I agree with you on that, but I also really like the idea of a female based society, you know, yeah. like they're incredibly like, like, you know, these strong, brave, incredible, independent women who literally don't need men, don't want men, don't anything. And you have Urbosa, who's like this incredibly strong character and she's mm. a wonderful personality. She's just a very interesting character. So I think that while they are a little sexualized, I do appreciate that they're focusing like on an all female society. I think that yeah. mixes it up a little bit, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, and t- yeah. I so, I don't. Oh, no boys allowed. Yeah, no. And I love it how Link has to cross dress in order to get into mm-hmm. that. Yeah. That's yeah. That's yeah. that's representation again. Yeah. Like that's what we need more of in yeah. everything. And it's not like nobody makes fun of him. No, yeah. it's not like weird or anything. It's just like a thing he has to do to get in. Like it's not it's weird. Not, no, exactly. Yeah, there's not one character that's like, ah, oh, you're just as a female. They they all like, oh, you're you're you are a female welcome like hello yeah. like one of them one of them does get overly attracted to link he, and then the wind blows by yeah and lifts up his mask and he's like oh <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah it's it's just yeah it's it's way that that's that's the way things have to go i mm. think and I, as as lemon said i am a massive fan of the gerudos and let's not pretend like that's a recent thing either like the grudos have always been an all-female mm. society in yeah. all zelda canon so yeah in in that respect i think nintendo's been a little bit more on top of this as you know as in terms of other companies and and mm-hmm. things like that and their ads and stuff are like the only like ones that have more of a female presence in their ads even though it's still like it's still kind of um, yeah. A bit weird in some ways, but at least it's something. It's yeah. not. I thought I thought the Spartan women were really that was a good that I think that actually if if you line it up with Samus, I think that was actually a really good thing. And uh, I mean, in Sanity, you've played Halo Infinite, but you see them a lot more in in that and Halo Wars too. You actually saw the. the uh, representation of women a lot more with a, as a Spartan, not just, um, right. you know, not just as a Marine, but, you know, as a Spartan as well, where you do remove that sexuality side of things from yeah. the mind because they're in armour and they're badass and they're killing everybody. So I wouldn't make a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, um, cause I somehow my Skype decided to quit on me. Um, but when you asked about like what female represent, like what female characters or anything like that, um, that I would identify like with, like said, Oh my God, like there, um, growing up, there was no female representation up until Lara Croft. Um, and even since Lara Croft, the representation is very limited to, um, and I don't want to make it about any specific thing, but it's very limited to what is represented. Um, you know, I didn't have, uh, any representation of like a strong Hispanic or Latino female character. And I still don't. I don't think there's any female, strong Latino, like, primary character in any specific game that I can say, oh, my God, like, that's me, you know? It's all kind of, like, side characters or something like that where, again, it's that whole kind of you're not strong enough, so just go over there, you know, be support 
basically. Yeah. yeah. The healers of the yes. group. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and it translates too to like first person shooter games where you're playing with males and it's like, don't let her go alone. Um, because it's a number one, it's a game. And number two, I, I can, I can take care of myself. And yeah. if I die, I die. <laughs> like I, I'm not a damsel in distress. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Oh, you know what I think did really well is uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yes, 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 absolutely, yes. Yes. That like Lemon has played that on stream, and Laura has played it off stream. You yeah. guys both chose the the female. No, she chose okay. the female. Yeah, Lemon chose the. I remember I, watching yeah. Lemon stream, and I was like, "Whoa, this is the guy character!" But I was just like, I saw that you could be a chick, and I was like, "Hell oh, yeah!" Most of the like gaming gaming clips and videos and stuff that I see, people have chosen the female Eivor, which like I personally don't like that much, but I think she's a wonderful character. I think she's a great yeah. character, and I think it's so good that in that one and like in Odyssey, for example, you can choose a female character. And Cassandra in Odyssey was also an incredible character. So I'm just really glad that you have that option to play yeah. as this very strong, awesome like woman, you know? So it's pretty cool. Right. Hopefully I've, more games. One of that. my favorite yeah. things about that, I haven't personally played it, but I've watched Laura Laura play it on the PlayStation, is that as female Avor, you are still able to do all the things that the male Avor would do that are somewhat considered male activities mm-hmm. by like unf- hooking up with chicks. Exactly. Yeah. And you can yep. do that with like a male Avor, you can do the reverse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's that is yeah, that's fantastic. Again, more inclusivity. You mm-hmm. know, it's not just females. We need yeah. we need representation of le- lesbian sure. females. Yeah, or, like when back in the day animals. when you couldn't like marry chicks in The Sims or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, The Sims is a, a good example of well as well. They have come a long way in terms mm-hmm. of representation too. Mm-hmm. They have many yeah. non-binary characters. Like you before, like. It back in like The Sims One and Two, like you weren't able to wear women's clothing if your characters are male and vice versa. But now they're just like, now you can because why would why why not? Well, right? it's taken a lot of uh, a lot of voices to get there too, oh, because no. it's been a very very large, you know, user saying, "Hey, you don't have this skin color, you don't have this hair type, you don't have." I can't wear whatever I want on my character, so on and so forth. So it's 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 really neat that to see that even though it's been very small baby steps that they have done, they have been doing them consistently to initiate that inclusivity and diversity that a game like that requires or needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, yeah. It's a, baby steps is unfortunately all that we can hope for i guess these days but at I, least it's something i would way prefer one baby step forward than just staying stagnant i would Absolutely. like to see it in like 10 or 20 years or something and see where it's come then yeah exactly. I, i'm hopeful for the industry and for media as a whole the entire media industry again coming back to stuff like disney is doing a really good job at the moment um or all, all those all, all different types of media. And I really hope in 10 years, Insanity, for your daughter or your grandchildren that they do have a strong Hispanic female lead character to call their own, if you will, who they can name yeah. them. I, I named all my characters as a kid Tom because that's me. I'm Tom. There was always a white male with, with brown hair. And, yeah. and I, 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 I'm blessed. I like, I'm sorry to begin with, but I, I'm, I'm truly blessed. And I don't, I don't take that for granted any, any day of the week. I am part of the luckiest population of people on the planet. I, I am a, I'm a white male. I have it better than almost anybody. And I, yeah, it just, it, 
hearing your story and sanity about not having those that that type of role model like yeah it it, bre- it breaks my heart it's not it's not fair yeah. yeah it's bottom line and like white males aren't even the largest population of people <laughs> it's true yeah yeah but there, there's way more chinese there's right there's a hell of a lot of hispanics like yeah i yeah I, just, I think that- Disney as a whole is making some pretty good strides here. I mean, if you look at some of the latest movies they've got, uh, that's got more Hispanic representation, I guess you could say, and, and other Absolutely. other cultures as well. I, th- I think that whole, I mean, Marvel, let's be serious, Marvel is everything. Yeah. And then even I think they've done... And some people might disagree with this, but I'll tell you, you're wrong. Mm. In so the the first, the original Star Wars, mm-hmm. not great for women representation, and I think the the prequels were getting better, but still sexualized Padme and Madara. But mm-hmm. I think the Clone Wars TV show, as an example, definitely set itself apart from that and you, you know like a lot of people are saying that star wars community are sexist and all this sort of stuff i s- sort of disagree with that sentiment i think originally with you know the originals and the and the prequels a bit of that was going on don't get me wrong but i think since clone wars and i'm not talking about the latest three movies either because yes they were diverse and yada 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 they were crap movies but Clone Wars, I think, was really good because it brought to light uh, uh, Ahsoka Tano is, is sort of who I'm thinking of here. And she is possibly one of the most popular characters in Star Wars that, that there is. Like, plain and simple, Ahsoka Tano is one of the most popular. And I think they've done a really good job of that. Better than what I expected them to come out with if that makes sense well how old are the clone wars now when was that when did that come a thing that's a while yeah i i agree it's been a while and you see this evolution with a lot of franchises like uh x-men for example is a is a good one so when the first x-men was first released rogue is this very 2008 there you go clone wars cool yeah, so, yeah, X-Men, Rogue and Storm, they're all very sexy characters, you know. Again, coming back to what you guys were saying about you know, they've all got some form of assets, uh, if you will. And as we go further and further, like the first X-Men movie, like Rogue is, like, she's unable to have human contact. She is not, I mean, that that's always Rogue in the comics, but, you know, they, they play on that and... She she can't be sexualized because it's impossible for her, and I yeah. So it, it again baby steps insanity. What's insanity was saying? Baby steps. We're getting there. Fingers crossed. Mm. Yeah. I also just would like to say I've been thinking it this whole time. I would like to apologize on behalf of all of us males. Uh, yeah. Sorry. It's it's not what we're all like, and and none of us are trying to say that everybody is like this, and that every male you'll come across in the gaming industry is the worst, and they're going to over sexualize you. Unfortunately, it's just that minority of voices that just screams louder and says more shocking yes. things than yep. the rest of us. It's a vocal and, minority. Yeah. Exactly. I think yep. also to that to that uh, topic, having, you know, as males, if you have friends that do that, mm-hmm. tell them to Call not them do accountable. that. Tell them it's yes. exactly. Tell them it's not okay. Same Definitely. as catcalling is not okay. Right. Same yep. as like, it, it's, it's just a matter of holding your peers accountable as well. It cannot be all on us. And right. it's no. always all on us. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Yep. Yeah. I 100% agree. No, yeah. yeah. You have to call 
friends or colleagues or whoever out, which would full circle here is exactly what Activision Blizzard did not do. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they even pushed the lawsuit. They they extended, you know, hearings and stuff like that. That's that's where at that point I was considering downloading the game again because I'm like, you know, they they're doing something. They're gonna look at this. They're gonna work through this. And then I read, oh, they're extending the the lawsuit. They're extending the hearings. I'm like, yeah, no, nope, nope, no. I'm only one, but I, I'm not. I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. No, I well, think the thing is, you're not. You're not only one. Yeah, I think that's yeah. that's the key. Like before all of this happened, there was literally 15 of us that would play regularly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that that has right. like, I don't even know the last time that anybody has even spoken in the chat. Now it's just it's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. yeah. I got my new hey. Switch and I didn't even download Overwatch. Yeah, I was like, nah. So can I ask the ladies something then? And I'll I'll start with you, Levin. What? Do you want from viewers? So say, for example, this somebody has come into your chat and they've been overly just weird, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to call it weird and unacceptable. Mm-hmm. Do you want your chat members to step in? And how far do you want them to step in? Or would you prefer to handle it yourself? Um, I'm one of those people who does appreciate people coming in to defend myself but god forbid i even let it get to that point if somebody's being that weird and being that inappropriate i'm gonna ban them i'm not gonna let them keep harping on the same bs again and again and again so you know and if it was just weird from the get-go it's like okay no you're you're done and for the most part i can count my community that they absolutely would step up for me um you know and i do appreciate that a lot um i don't feel i feel like at least for me, I don't have to deal with everything on my own. I have people who can help me out with it. And so people who support me, so why not, you know, you know, they can help me, I can help them. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Yeah. Um, insanity? Um, I would have to agree with Laura and kind of piggyback on what she just said. I think, um, you know, I would appreciate that my followers and my supporters, you know, back me up and and have my back and like, let the person know that it's not right to do or say what they're saying. Um, However, I try to be as um, diligent as possible to, you know, take care of any of those comments as quickly as possible. Um, I also do not stand like, be, having my back is one thing, being a bully is another, regardless of how inappropriate a person is, being a bully is not okay. Right. So going after them, you know, harassing them, threatening them, stuff like that is just absolutely uncalled for as well. Um, I've never had anyone do it. Yeah. I've never had anyone do that from my, you know, community, but, you know, just saying it because it's, Sometimes we go all out, especially if, you know, we're very um, attuned with that person that we're watching and, and we're following and we're supporting. Um, so just keeping that in mind is is also really important. Yeah. Yeah, I have experienced that before where, like, somebody has, like, decided that somebody is trolling me or whatever and has, like not even in the chat so this person knew that what they were doing was wrong to the point that they would not even say what they've said to these other people in the chat they had to go to a separate area to do so they would like um talking to the people in my chat through discord bullying them essentially um trying to stick up for me and took it way too far obviously they knew that because that's why they weren't doing it in the stream because they knew that what they were doing was wrong and then they're like but why are you mad at me like i was having your back 
but then I'm trying to explain <laughs> you're just going too far. Yeah, like, there's a line. Yeah, exactly. there is a line. Like when you're telling people that they are trash and they are worthless and their lives are worth nothing, like that that's too far. Yeah. And you like and they they know as well when it's too far because yeah. that's why yeah. you tell to another platform so that the streamer doesn't see it. Right. But then, like, it, it just goes back to what Lemon was saying. The ban button is your best friend. Yep. Like, yep. ban them. It's yep. a weight lifted off your shoulders. You don't need them. You don't need those people mm. in yep. your stream or your life in general. Yep. Yeah. And that's an important note as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Too many small streamers feel like they need every viewer and everyone. Mm -hmm. No, nah. whether they yeah. be get rid of them, females. man. Yeah, yeah. Get they're garbage. Get rid of the garbage. Yep. Absolutely. Take you the trash out. You have to take out the trash. Yep, that's where it goes out to the curb. You know that <laughs> actually makes me think, uh, Laura and Insanity. I like to hear your opinion on this. So this happened to me multiple times where I've had people come in and be like friendly. And then overly friendly and then overly share and then trauma dump and then expect me to take care of that for them. And I've had it multiple times where I've had to get rid of those people. Have you guys had anybody like that? Did you block them immediately? Did you become their friends, then block them? What happened? I'm just curious. Go ahead. You want to go first, Laura? We have experienced something similar to that. Um, but we haven't so since there's two of us okay so it's a situation that actually happened somewhat recently and tom is like we need to block this person but i'm also like somewhat sympathetic because of the trauma dump and it makes me feel very sympathetic towards them and i'm like oh you know what like maybe we shouldn't you never want to be like the thing that's going to tip someone over the edge or something, you know, but at the same time, you've got to take care of your friends as well. And if somebody is trauma dumping to the point where it's like actually affecting everybody else, yeah. like what is the line? That is a, <laughs> that is a good question. Yeah. yeah. Very early on uh, when I first joined the stream and we became some kind of gaming we had this one follower who had come on and he was gay and he came in and he said, I'm gay. And like, I was like, Laura had already interacted with this person. I was like, Oh, cool, man. Like, that's cool. And then he kept, kept going on about it. It was, it was like, Oh, I've been banned from streams for saying that. And I was like, Oh, that's, that is absolutely like how that that's not right. That's, that is not cool at all. Um, and he's like, yeah. And then he just kept going. So no matter what we would talk about in terms of our stream or what we were playing or how the game was going, everything came back to, oh, by the way, I'm gay. By it came the back way. to him. Yeah, yeah. So it became this very selfish, self-centered conversation. It became apparent why he had been blocked off of people's streams before. And yeah. I don't think it was necessary necessarily because of the reasons why he thought it was. I think it was because it was just yeah. it wasn't because of his sexuality at all. It was no. because he was being annoying, self centered and not keeping up with the chat. It was yeah. just all about him. He wasn't reading the room. Right. Yeah, not ready for him. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's important. Yeah. Insanity. Yeah. What about you? Well, me, I have like this special innate ability. I don't know how. I guess I have it written on my forehead where people feel like, hey, you look like a good person to just talk to and drop everything on yep. you because I need to let it out. Yep. Um, I've had two instances, um, one where I was actually modding for a fellow streamer and this one gentleman came in to the stream, said hello, um, and then started complaining that 
everyone had ignored him and so on. So I'm like, hey, no, you know, we're here, you know, let's just talk and whatever. So he added me as a friend on Twitch and whispered to me, oh, thank you so much for making me feel welcome, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine and dandy. Then comes into one of my streams and says, hello, I'm in the middle of a game. There's sometimes some games that you're like super hyper focused. You can't look at your chat immediately and people are chatting. So those messages go through super quick. I then stop and scroll up and notice that he's like, okay, then I'm leaving since you're ignoring me. And I'm like, whoa, what, what happened? Later on messages me through whisper and just like, you're an a-hole, you're a B, this, that, and the other. You said you weren't going to do this. And I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's start this over again because that's not how we do this. I can talk to you if we restart this because that's not going to happen. Yeah. Had that and then had another time where um, I had been playing with these with this couple for a really long time and uh, the gentleman decided to up and leave out of the blue. Decided wasn't going to be there anymore and the um, the other party came to my game and then just started bawling on stream about what had happened so i had to mute my stream um because i'm not going to put that on there either mm. um and mm. it's like one of those things where i can't tell her okay no shut up um because i don't want to hear it. it it it's kind of like letting her just vent eventually she did leave the game um so i was able to just go back to streaming but i've had those instances and it's it's a very difficult situation you get found you get to find yourself in because like laura said you don't want to be the catalyst for something worse for them um but at the same time it, it sometimes those situations trigger some other people in mm. your stream yep. other followers so it's it's I think um, the best way to sometimes handle those situations is potentially asking them to bring it off stream and to whisper you if at all possible, um, rather than having it on stream. So that mm -hmm. way you can then make that kind of more um, educated decision of, okay, I'm going to ban you because this is just not okay? Or is it truly someone that's actually looking for some advice and you can just be that person that provides it for that period of time? Well, I guess that's, for me, that's where I got burned, was telling people they could talk to me and keeping my DMs open so anybody could talk to me. Because then that's when two people thought that they had every privilege and every right to my time. And, yeah. you know... It, so I think it's kind of one of those like fine lines you have to walk. You have to say like, yeah, I'm going to help you guys. I'll be a nice person, whatever. But at the same time, also like saying I have to protect myself, my own sanity. Yes. And making sure I protect my viewers in those situations. And it's like, you just kind of have to find some way to juggle it. And I feel like women get a lot of that. I don't yes. know how much men get that. But I know as women streamers, we get a lot of that. I don't know if it's because they feel like, oh, yeah, they're just going to be super nice because they're women or something. I don't know. But it's something I've noticed. Yeah, I, I sort of probably agree with you, Lemon. I think it's um, more the, the women factor. I think it's potentially people see that as a maternal source. Yeah. Uh, as, you know, males are typically not seen in that light. Um, yeah. I mean, even I think I've told Insanity this a few times, but I've caught it when I've taken my daughter who was one year one years old at the time when I've gone to the change rooms and to change her I have a cop abuse because I wasn't a woman what am I doing in there and like full-on abuse too like yeah. yelling at me while I'm trying to change a one-year-old yeah. and uh, obviously slightly off topic but it just I think really nails puts a nail in the coffin really that it's 
that female maternal thing and that's why people do it i i used to stream myself and i haven't for for a while now but i never cut i don't remember ever anybody trying to dump stuff on me i mean if somebody tried to talk i would probably attempt to you know because you don't want to be that catalyst as as everybody's sort of said but at the same time i'm not a counselor i'm not the right person to right yeah to you're not the one to get medical about this like if i say something wrong because you're playing a game at the end of the day and you're trying to entertain other people so if you're doing it on stream especially if you say something wrong because you know you in the moment you're sort of trying to juggle 10 million things if you say something then oh shit is that on me did that right. person go ahead and do x y and z or say this or do that because of my commentary so i, I don't think it's fair of anybody to jump into a stream and then to automatically you, you know i mean with the gentleman on tom and laura's stream like you got you got banned because you're a pain in the ass not yeah. for any other reason like me personally i don't yeah. care what you are i don't give a shit no mm -hmm. you know like no skin off my nose <laughs> doesn't yeah. affect me yeah. what do i care for yeah, yeah that's, that's really, how it, should really, be. it goes back to what lemon was saying and what and insanity was saying about how she scrolled up in the in the chat and this person's like you're ignoring me and this person was so we were talking to one of our viewers about her sister that had passed away tragically and this person's like why are you ignoring my question <laughs> and we're like oh, dude <laughs> dude yeah. that was just not the time like wait 60 mm -hmm. two minutes i don't know like the, and that comes read into the it. room that comes into it as well like we're we're more than happy to talk if your sister has passed away for an extreme example like nobody here not insanity nor lemon nor us is gonna say oh sorry take that elsewhere like right. we're sympathetic nice we're, we're nice people like of course of course we're gonna have you back with that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it, it's not gonna take up the whole stream though and, right. and that is important and dan i i think you said it uh i'm not a counselor i think the first piece of advice you need to tell these people is exactly Get that help right i'm not a counselor there is no shame in seeking professional yeah. advice yeah yeah I, I have a mental health section on our Discord, and I have said that multiple times. There is yeah. absolutely no shame in seeking professional help. Yeah, yep. that is what I told that gentleman that, you know, whispered at me. And I'm like, you know, just go get help. I, I'm not a counselor. I can't help you in the way that you need to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go get help. There's no issue with that. We all need it. Yep. And I think a very important part is also, like, people need to realize we're we appreciate you being there we appreciate your support we are truly grateful for allowing us to be somewhere in your lives you know entertaining you for the time that we entertain you however we are not property right no, no. we are, are, are exactly we're not property we're not yours to use abuse yeah or utilize how and when you feel like it right mm -hmm. you're not entitled to us exactly yeah. oh absolutely no. oh, I think it's right though what she said earlier about anonymity it yes. really like in that in those cases as well is that person potentially feels like they can talk because who the hell knows who i am exactly it's low risk yeah yeah um just going to spill all when you know realistically chill it's not yeah, absolutely it's not for you guys to it's not for you to fix like oh yeah no, no, no. and again like look the get the gaming world as a whole i feel like there is quite a few uh fragile people for lack of a better term i would like to say 
Um, we were talking about games done quick last week. I don't know if Insanity or Lemon you've uh, ever had anything to do with GDQ, but it, it's absolutely fantastic. It is such an inclusive, beautiful community of people um, really into like trans rights and basic, like just, just a great place to be. And that I feel is quite representative of, of gaming as a whole. It's not these men and their call of duty you know that's that's not what it's about uh we've i i can speak for myself and laura and dan unfortunately i can't speak for you two but uh us three have all played games at least once in our lives to escape oh yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, that's mostly what it is a lot of the time yes right absolutely Yeah, yeah thank you that it is yeah we Real life sucks. Let's be honest. Like, we're yeah, it's, it's it's not the greatest, but a uh, high rule in Breath of the Wild, despite it being you know kind of run down and uh, has been taken over by Calamity Ganon. It's a it's a nice place. You know, it's, it's a it's a really nice place to be, uh, and like it's so in some cases it's hard because there are a lot again fragile people in in this community, mm-hmm. and. and that is fine. We we have all been there. We some of us may be there still, and there is nothing wrong with that. But please, like, don't. We're, we're, I'm, like, none of us are saying don't dump this information well, yeah, on us. It's like to an extent because yeah. we're all here to help our friends. Right. Yeah, we all would, of course, have a discussion with one of our friends, try and help them out with whatever they are going mm-hmm. through. Yeah, exactly. But sometimes there's a time and a place, place. like yep. maybe the whispers or yep. the DMs is yep. a better place exactly. for it than in the middle of a stream, for if, example. If you and I, Laura, were going through some relationship troubles, God forbid, I would not jump onto Lemon stream, for example, and just say, oh, Lemon, like Laura and I have had an argument. I feel shit right now. It's just yeah. not the the place there is a time it doesn't make sense yeah. no, no i yeah. might dm you lemon and say yeah. shit you got any advice for me mm. that, that's an entirely different kettle of fish though yeah right yeah. you're not live you're not trying to be an entertainer mm-hmm. you're not trying to and if she doesn't have advice for you that's fine then you... <laughs> exactly that's, that's, fine. that's yeah. fine and you accept it exactly right? yeah 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 exactly yeah yeah it when we're live on twitch we're uh, we're all, we're entertainers. Like that is. You're working. Um, That's what you're doing. You're actually yeah, that, working. I didn't yeah, want to use yes. that word, but yeah, yeah, we're we're at work. We're, That's what it is, though. You don't yeah. you don't call up a friend who's, you know, works at a restaurant, or go in there and be a customer and take up all their time doing it. Like yeah, you know, for the lack of a better word or whatever the hell you want to call it. It is work. I mean, you're all yeah. affiliates. Yeah. So it's all work. No, yeah, yeah. I agree. I think we should view it as such. You know, it's like it's, it's a professional environment. We can be nice and we can be friendly and be reasonable. But there comes a point where it's like this is not an appropriate place for this because it right. is a professional thing, you know. And it's, yeah, there comes a point. If it's like a, I don't know, a little bit of a like, hey, I'm having a shit day or yeah. something. Like yeah, yeah but there's there's an there's a certain amount. Yeah. I also yes. think that and that should be more of a follower that you know, if that yeah. makes sense. You know, oh, like yeah. somebody that's been I'm around for more than three and a half minutes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Agreed. Yeah. If if yeah. insanity was to come to our stream and say I'm having a terrible day, we'd spend a number of minutes talking yeah. about it rather right. than if Joe Blow from down the street, who's first time viewer, first time in the chat. I'm having a bad day. Like, I I don't know what to do for like, you. Like that sucks, but yeah. It's like Let's I'm sorry, bud. Doing this yeah. <laughs> yeah. distract you from your bad. I day. think we we right. do say that quite often, Laura. It's like, oh, you're having yeah. a bad. I'm sorry. Here, come to our space. We can make it better for you. Let's talk yeah. about Minecraft. Or let's talk about Pokemon. You know, do you like what's right. your favorite Pokemon? Like mm-hmm. that's that's what we're for. Again, you know, yeah. like gaming is to escape. Watching people play games should also be an escape. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important for all of us to remember that no is a very powerful word. Yes. 
Yep. yep. You bang and on. the ban yep. button is your best friend sometimes. Yep. 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 yep, there is no shame in any of that. Don't be afraid to use it. No. Yep. I used it for the first time. It was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. Yep. It was yep. great. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's empowering. It's awesome feeling. You you are honestly better off getting to Twitch affiliate in a year and having people that you respect and know and who are kind than getting there in a month with toxic culture. Absolutely. True. Yeah. Yeah. I say that to everyone that's consistently complaining in any of the discords that I'm a member of. Oh my God, I don't have enough followers. I don't have enough views. And I'm like, let it be, do your thing. Let it be yeah. organic. You want people that are going to be there for you, mm-hmm. not people that you're going to have a thousand followers, but only five show up. Yeah. 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 That, that as yeah. well. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Lemon. That's I why think the follower list is inaccurate sometimes. It's not. Yeah, that doesn't really show how much. Like, the, the more accurate number, the more important number is your average viewership. That's what's yeah. important. Exactly. Followers. Yeah. I think you've got less followers than us, but a higher average viewership. Mm. Uh, so Maybe. it's it's a perfect example. Like it, yeah. it doesn't matter. You want people there for you as much as exactly. your content is good and. Somebody might lie, uh, Lemon, are you still playing The Witcher at the moment? Mm-hmm. I believe. So people who come come to your stream for the first time might come there because, oh, The Witcher is cool. Let's check that out. Yeah. You want them to come for The Witcher. You want them to stay for you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 If mean, you can do that, you're a, successful. Exactly. exactly. That's a good point. And I do, I do a bit of research and watching a few – streams uh, from different streamers and that sort of thing, depending on the game that I'm looking at. It's actually how I met um, Laura and Tom. And my thing is, yeah, I'll join for the game. So, like, I, as an example, game of the week this week on on iDigital Games or last week was God of War. So I jumped on a few streams for God of War to watch. And it really is about a streamer that actually talks to you and and keeps you there because there are a couple that I joined where I was like, I don't know, like just not feeling it. It wasn't they didn't doing anything wrong. I was just like, "Ah, I don't know, you don't, you're not really speaking to me at this point in time, not verbally, but you know, you know what I mean. It just didn't mesh well. And then I started looking at some um, Horizon videos and the couple of people that I found. Now, I, don't, I purposely do not go to the top. I never have. I don't, I don't go to the person with the most uh, viewers because I like to see what their interactions are like as well, especially if I'm researching people to be affiliates and, and that sort of thing. So when... Jumping on, I jumped on four Horizon streams and there was literally only one person that I connected with and their viewership was quite high. So they had a, they had a lot of viewers watching, but their followers were lower compared to the other three that I looked at, which had sort of two, 3,000 followers, but there were four people watching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... I think that's a key thing to remember as well. I mean, again, I don't, I don't stream anymore, but for me, I think that's key is just some people you mesh with. Yep. Yeah. Such a shame because you're a great singer. No. <laughs> and that, that's an important note as well, Dan. Like, you, as a streamer, you can't expect to grab everyone. Yeah. No, you can't. It's like any type of media of any kind, music, movies, shows, whatever. Not everything is for everyone. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big metal fan music wise, and I'm the first person to tell you that it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea, you know? Yeah. Like, not everybody loves Death Growls and Cannibal Corpse, and that's fine. And you know what? That's half the fun of it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's half of the appeal. And as a fan of not just metal, but uh, of games and of niche games too, that's 
that's a that it's just an important fact, you know. Like you can't you can't expect to grab everyone, and you can't expect to like everything. Yeah, and that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. arguably better. If we all like the same things, the world would be boring and boring. True. no diversity, and it would suck. Let's yeah. be honest. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what? Is there anything uh, anybody else would like to bring up? Because I think that is a perfect send-off right there. Yeah, I think we've covered everything. We have, haven't we? Yeah. All righty. Well, Insanity, let's kick off with you. Where can people find you? Um, I am obviously on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Insanity Secure. Also have TikTok and have Hover where I've been uploading some of my clips from Fortnite. Um, just being silly and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And also, uh, Instagram at Insanity Secure, um, where you can reach me. I have never heard of Hover before. Is that what is what? that? Oh, like, that it? is oh, a my new God. app. An okay. American. Dan, you gotta be on it. Heard of Hover? Is, is I have it? heard of Hover. Oh, yes. <laughs> get on it. Ago, so. right. oh. You are today ago. years old. <laughs> yes. Um, Insanity told me. No, no, I don't. Oh, thank know what God, it's not just me. I was like, <gasps> I really am twenty-eight. It is, it is I, I, it is I exactly didn't like TikTok. Good. But for streamers, yes, oh. you get a lot of you'll you'll get a lot of people coming in too. Actually, yes, it's quite successful because it's so small at this yeah. point too. Yes, so good time to hop on. Yeah, you have yet streamers. So it's just basically where you like a place to upload your clips and you upload your clips. You can give likes. You can comment on other clips. You can say GGs to people. Like you can follow clip to upload. And it goes based on gravity. So the higher your gravity, the higher you're exposed to other people on the app. So you'll get more exposure the higher your gravity. Right. Wow. It's really, really interesting, really nice. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Very friendly. Glad I asked. Aiming on hover in the next couple of weeks. Man, I had the most epic moment on stream last Wednesday. I think you were going to have to either join our Discord or follow us on Hover to find out what it was, though. I thought about it. I couldn't stop thinking about it all week. I was like, wow, that was a crazy moment. Mm-hmm. Not I even Tom just had like the best moment. If I'm, if I'm being honest here, I, I think did. Tom had the best moment today. Yeah, and it was awesome. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm very happy I clipped we that. Clipped it. And put oh, you it clipped it? Discord. Okay, good. I can yeah. go check it out then. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Go check it out. You know what we didn't clip? Check out Homer. When, when he destroyed Laura's stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. He did what? I know. I went to go I pee died. and I came back and everything was ruined. Everything that I just spent the last 10 mm-hmm. minutes doing, ruined. Everything. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is exactly what I said. You know, I'm like, Tom. I, yeah. Do you know those green guys that blow things up in Minecraft? Yeah, I got yeah. blown up. Yeah. Creepers? Yeah, yeah, he blew everything. We, up. we call them blowy up guys. It's more fun. I love it. <laughs> sparky, sparky, boom, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jen or Lemon, where can people find you on the interwebs? So definitely on Twitch, Lemon Cult Games, uh, and definitely on Hover. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of TikTok. I do do Instagram um and twitter uh though i'm trying to build that up slowly over time you can find me anywhere it's all under the same moniker lemon gold games so beautiful dan what about you where can people find you idigitalgames.com that's basically it no i do have facebook instagram twitters tiktoks and i'll Hover's have a happen. hover just for fun <laughs> why not are they all under idigital games too sir all under iDigital Games. Beautiful. And Laura, save the best to like. No, nah, no, nah, that's subjective. <laughs> uh, I, I have to say that because I, li- I live with her. So if I don't, I'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> Laura, well, where can people find you or us? Twitch at Some Kind of Gaming, YouTube, Some Kind of Gaming. I'm on Instagram at Nature Gamer, N A T U R. Nature spelled correctly was taken. 
it's a shame, isn't it? You can also find us on Twitter as well. I agree with Lemon. We're trying to build that up slowly over time. So it's just Twitter slash some kind of gaming. Basically, any and all of this social media garbage. Maybe hover. Mm, hover in the next couple of weeks. Don't forget to check that out. <laughs> I ex- fully expect it from you two. It's like your homework, okay? I yes. expect it. <laughs> next week we'll come with hover. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good. Dan will definitely hold to that. <laughs> well, I just want to extend a massive, massive thank you to both Lemon Colt Games and Insanity Secure for being here with us this week. We really appreciate it. Again, it's our 10th anniversary here on Some Low Grade Gamers. We've been at this for 10 weeks now and it's it's just a ton of fun and it's even more fun when we can draw our friends into it and you guys you guys are our friends we we all live on opposite sides of the world to each other and it's just one more thing that i love about this industry and i love about twitch and gaming in general is that some of my best friends live on the opposite side of the world in different continents let's just let's it's a just blessing take- and a curse it yes yeah, you're right yep, <laughs> yeah <laughs> We all very much appreciate that. So, yeah, from all of us here at Some Low Grade Gamers, thank you two so much. We hope we will have you on again. Hopefully we didn't scare you off too much. Hopefully uh, Dan's mouth wasn't too weird and he didn't... Uh... Oh, oh, he has a lovely mouth, remember? <laughs> oh, sorry. Exactly. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. Same time, same place. Thank you. Bye. Bye.